Hello and welcome to lecture one of the work unit in Phys 1104 and I'll bet you feel that you haven't been doing enough work in this course so this unit is all about work. Let's start off with this example of a person using a rope to pull a cart and our system is going to be just the cart and because of the person pulling on it the cart speeds up and that's because there's a force exerted on the cart by the rope. Note that the rope isn't in the system and so that's an external force. We already know from earlier in the course that external forces change the system momentum. But the momentum is clearly not the only thing that's changing here. This system is gaining kinetic energy, and there doesn't seem to be any other state change going on inside the system uh, to compensate for that, and so it looks like this system is not closed. Well, the way we know to verify that is to look for a state change in the environment. And indeed, there is one here, but it's rather subtle. The person is consuming chemical energy, and some of that is ending up as kinetic energy in the system, and some of it is ending up as thermal energy in the person. But that's a little subtle. And it certainly looks like the reason the system's kinetic energy is increasing is the action of this force that the rope is exerting on the cart. So this external force is changing the system's kinetic energy. But we know that external forces always change the system's momentum, but they don't always change the system's energy. So what we'd now like is a better way of determining when forces do and don't change a system's energy. Here's another example. Let's think about a spring, and it's being compressed by a brick that's been placed on top of it, and our system is just the spring. So the brick is exerting a force on the spring, and that's an external force because the brick isn't in our system. And we can see that our system is gaining spring potential energy, but once again there doesn't appear to be any corresponding uh, reduction in an internal energy of the system, and so it looks like this is not a closed system, and we should identify a state change in the environment. Well, in this case, it's that the brick moved down, and so since the brick and the earth are both out in the environment, we can say that the environment has lost gravitational potential energy. And so it's the gravitational potential energy in the environment that has become spring energy in our system. I didn't include the gravitational potential energy in my energy bar chart because it's not in my system. So here we see that an external force, the force that the brick ex exerts on the spring, appears to have caused a change in the system's potential energy. Now here's a person pulling a block, and I've included the block and the floor in my system. And again, there's an external force, which is the force that the rope exerts on the block. And what's happening now, if the block moves at constant velocity because of this interaction, is that the system of the block and the floor simply gains thermal energy. And so we see that external forces, in this case the force of the rope on the block, can also cause irreversible state changes inside the system. In all of those three cases I've just looked at, it looks like an external force has caused the system's energy to change. We're going to define work as the change in a system's energy due to the action of external forces. Compare this with impulse. We've defined impulse as the change of a system's momentum due to external forces. And so work and impulse are rather similar in many ways, but we should contrast them. Impulse is a vector, and we can get components of impulse by looking at the areas under the various force component versus time graphs. Work, though, is a scalar, so in some senses it's going to be easier to work with than impulse. And you might ask whether it's an area under a graph. Well, stay tuned and you'll see. It is an area under some graph, but not a force versus time graph. I also want to contrast work with something else that we won't really look at in this course, but I feel I should mention, and it's heat. One way to change a system's energy is to have external forces act on the system, but another is to have thermal energy get transferred directly between the system and the environment. When that happens, the amount of energy that was transferred between the system and the environment is called heat. And note, that means heat is not the same thing as thermal energy. 
That's all I'm going to say about heat for this entire course. I'll have to leave that as a topic for a thermodynamics course. I want to talk about use of language for a moment because it's useful. In this case, with the rope exerting a force on the cart and causing the cart's energy to change, we say that the force exerted by the rope on the cart does work on the cart. Or alternatively, we might say that the rope does work on the cart. Similarly, in the case of the brick compressing the spring, there's a change in the spring's energy. That's what we call the work. And that is the work done by the brick on the spring, or done by the force exerted by the brick on the spring. Notice, though, that the physics use of the word work, or doing work, is different from the everyday meaning. You're sitting at your computer right now watching these video lectures and doing the lesson, and I'm sure you feel that you are doing work. And in an everyday sense, you certainly are. But from the physics definition of work, you most certainly are not. You are not exerting forces on objects and causing their energies to change. And so, you're not doing any work right now. It's very important to recognize the difference between how external and internal forces affect the energy of a system. So, in this case, with the brick compressing the spring, that force exerted by the brick on the spring is an external force. And it does work on the system, and as a result, the system's energy increases. But now let's think about what would happen instead if we had included the earth and the brick in our system. Now that force that the brick exerts on the spring is an internal force. And the effect it has is to convert gravitational potential energy in the system into spring potential energy also in the system. So it hasn't changed the system energy, it's simply rearranged energy within the system. And it has both converted energy inside the system from one form into another, and you could also think of it as having transferred energy that was gravitational potential energy, in some sense belonging to the brick in the Earth, and it's transferred it into spring potential energy that in some sense belongs to the spring. But no work has been done because the system energy hasn't changed. I'll just say, that's not how everybody defines work. People will often talk about work by external forces causing the system's energy to change, as opposed to work done by internal forces causing rearrangements of energy within the system. That's actually the way I prefer to define work. However, this definition of work as the change of system energy resulting from the action of external forces is more in line with how you'll use the term in future thermodynamics courses that you'll take, and so that's why I'm choosing to use that definition. We already know that external forces don't always change a system's energy, so let's look at when forces do work or change a system's energy. So let's first think about a person pushing on a wall. Presumably this person isn't a superhero, and so the wall doesn't accelerate, and so its kinetic energy doesn't change. And also there's no state change in the wall, and so there's no change in internal energy either. And so no work is being done. The system's energy isn't changing. Why is this? Well, one thing to notice is that there's a point of application of the force where the person's hand is touching the wall. And notice that the point of application of the force didn't move during this process. Now contrast that with a person pushing on a cart, and the system is just the cart. The cart accelerates because of the force that the person exerts on it, and so its kinetic energy changes. The person is doing work on the cart. Notice that the point of application of the force this time has moved. We could define a displacement vector for the point of application of the force. And this is a rule for us now, that for a force to do work, its point of application must move. If the point of application of the force doesn't move, then it's impossible for any work to have been done by the force. The displacement of the point of application of the force is important to us in determining work, and so we're going to give it a name. We'll call it the force displacement, and we'll use delta R sub F to mean force displacement. 
Notice that in the case of the person pushing the cart, the force displacement was a non-zero vector, but in the case of the person pushing on the wall, the force displacement was zero, and that's why no work was done. We could contrast that again with pushing on a mattress. Now the mattress compresses, and although the mattress really hasn't moved, the point of application of the force has, and so there's a non-zero force displacement, and work is done. As a result, the mattress undergoes a change of state. I want to bring back an old familiar example to show you that this gives us a new way of understanding something that we've already understood in another way. So here's a cart being launched using a spring, and the system is the cart spring and wall, but not the floor. And we've already discussed earlier on in the course that this system is closed, but not isolated. It's clear that it's not isolated because the momentum of the situation changes. It's closed because there's no external state change, but it may have bugged you thinking about this, and I hope it has. Now we have an easier way of thinking about it. It's not isolated because the floor exerts a force on the wall. However, the point of application of that force does not move, and so our force displacement is zero, and that force does no work on the, on the system, and that's why the system is closed. Impulse is a vector, and so it can't be positive or negative, but work is a scalar, and it is allowed to be positive or negative. So let's think about the person pushing the cart again. The system is gaining energy, and so the change of energy is positive, and that change of energy due to the application of an external force is the work, and so the work is positive. On the other hand, the person could be pulling back on the cart to slow it down and bring it to rest. Now the system's energy is decreasing, the change in energy is negative, and so the work is negative. Look at how the vectors are pointing. In the first case, where the work was positive, the force that the person exerts in the, on the cart and the force displacement point in the same direction. On the other hand, in the second case, that force and the force displacement are pointing in opposite directions and the work is negative. And this is a general rule. When the force exerted on the system and the force displacement point in the same direction, then the work is positive. But if those two vectors point in opposite directions, then the work is negative.